So glad to have you with our channel on Let's Learn Food Science and just really great to be back with you producing some more videos. Today we're going to be talking about RACI charts for project management and this is fun and I've got a fun little example where I was dealing with some teenagers but uh, at the end of this video you'll be able to define RACI roles in projects. Who is responsible, accountable, consulted and informed? apply a variety of different RACI tracking strategies and justify why RACI tracking helps manage roles and responsibilities in complex projects. And I just mentioned my teenage daughter, but uh, it dawned on me that I should perhaps make this video because my teenage daughter decided that she was going to have a birthday party for one of her friends. And you think about a birthday party, someone needs to think about, are we setting up a, a reservation at a restaurant? Who's going to be bringing gifts, who's going to invite who, who is going to uh, make sure that all of these different tasks are done. And in all of this, my teenage daughter forgot to let me know that there was going to be a party and forgot to let me know that I needed to take her and her friends for a drive to this restaurant across town. And they forgot to invite me. And I, and I gave them a little bit of a Rakesy conversation saying, well, who was responsible for thinking through what all of these tasks were and who needed to be informed? Maybe the parents needed to be informed in this whole process. And maybe their parents needed to be responsible for some of the tasks, such as driving teenage kids. Anyways, Rakesy is one of these wonderful things uh, that's super simple when you think about it, but it really comes back to who does what task and at what level of what level of interest or what level of capacity do they need to be involved in that process? We have spent some of our other videos talking about different tasks and how we do project management and tracking of tasks in those projects. Rexy is all about thinking about who is involved and at what level of involvement do they need to be there and that we, deli we deliberately label that. And that deliberate labeling allows us to have clear roles and responsibilities for each of these different tasks that you're not there sitting there saying, well, who was supposed to be responsible for this? Who was supposed to do this? Like in the case of my teenage daughter and her birthday party, uh, it wasn't her birthday. So if it was her birthday, I would have been aware of this, but no one informed me until like half an hour beforehand that I was supposed to be driving kids to a restaurant and no one informed me that I wasn't invited to that restaurant. <laughs> I gave those kids some grief. Um, they're good kids. They really are. But uh, long story short, Rexy helps overcome many of those different who is responsible, who needs to be informed, who needs to have different roles. So yeah, it's all about understanding what are those tasks that need to be accomplished. And we have some other videos that talk about project planning and walking through all the different tasks, as well as doing critical path mapping. But this is all about who is going to be doing which tasks, who needs to be actively involved, or who just needs to be aware or consulted in this process. And so RIGSI is it's uh, an acronym. And you'll hear sometimes people say RIGSI, and you'll hear some people say RACI. But long story short, it's who is responsible, who is accountable, who is consulted, and who is informed in this process. So let's just jump out to some of these definitions. Responsible people are these people who are making sure that the overall project or the project task is being managed. So sometimes you will, in a project, you'll have one point person who's responsible for all the tasks. But more often than not, those tasks get alternated between expertise within the, within the project. So for example, if you're, if you're planning a project that maybe has a financial element, you might have someone from finance oversee and be responsible for that financial component, while the product development piece where you're uh, doing prototyping might be responsible for a product developer or a, a manager in that space. And then when it comes to commercialization, it may be people in operations who are going to be responsible. It's okay for that responsibility to be passed along as long as being done deliberately. But someone in the end needs to be responsible for each task. 
And the person who's responsible often has that capability of assigning tasks to accountable members in the group. We'll talk about accountability in just a second. And responsible also provides a lot of that quality control that they're making sure that if there are other people who are accountable in that, in that process, the responsible person comes in and says, I am the final opinion to say this is acceptable or not. Responsible people also make sure that there's leadership engaged in that process so that they're um, often talking to executives or board members or other stakeholders, maybe investors, to make sure that the, the project is going in the right direction. But that responsible person is involved in that communication and leadership. And of course, the responsible person acts a bit like a captain, delegating and communicating. So responsible is an important role. And Anytime we're doing project tracking, we often want to make sure that there's at least one person responsible for each of the different tasks within that project. Then there are accountable people, and these are oftentimes the people who are doing the day-to-day -day tasks of getting that, that element of a project done. And in certain larger organizations, you may have accountables on specific tasks with their own reporting teams, but that accountable person makes sure that that task is done. And on project workflows, generally, you will only have one accountable person per task. But in certain cases, you'll have, you, we'll, we'll, I'll show you an example of a Rexy chart where I was the responsible person and I delegated accountability out to the students. And so we didn't have one student, but every student was accountable to their assignment, which was part of the broader task. Then there's the consultant element and these are oftentimes senior technical manage managers who have they've got subject matter expertise they can they can provide insights and technical knowledge that can help move a project forward but they don't need to be in there doing the project every single day and that consulted element is it's really important to often have senior people who are available to provide insights on a bite size uh, perspective, but they don't need to be in there micromanaging every single task. And consulted could also be end user stakeholders, making sure that people are consulted during development and uh, user experience is integrated into the prototyping perspectives. Um, but consulted, again, the level of involvement is, it's there and it's intentional, but it's not continuous. It's not there on a I want to say that the, the consultants generally are not going to be in there doing the work. They're going to be helping the accountables and the responsibles do their work. And then informed, this is oftentimes where you've got senior management, executive team, boards of directors, uh, major investors. These are people who want to know what's going on, but they don't need to be involved. They may step in if there's an urgent issue, but in general, they just want to know so that there's no surprises and that they just want, if, if they weren't involved in um, signing on to the organization in some meaningful way, they, they obviously want to be involved in the process, but they don't need to be actively doing anything for this project. They just want to know the results. And so informed are important stakeholders and it is important to be informing people. They don't need to get every single email. They don't need to be in on every single decision. They just want to know what's those end results and what are the important factors in that project. So let's jump into some different example. I pulled this one from Forbes Advisor. They had a nice little article. Oftentimes you will make a chart. It will often be in Excel or a table in a Word document where you're taking a project work plan and you're just breaking the, those tasks. And then you're saying, all right, here are the different people who are gonna be involved in this project. It's also great from a mapping of human resources, how much, how much uh, human effort is going to be involved in a project so that you can then estimate out and say, okay, this senior analyst is going to be involved in so many hours on this project. We need to account for that senior analyst's salary for so many hours within this project because of their involvement. When they're just informed, they maybe aren't actively involved in that project, but when they are responsibles or accountables, they're going to be uh, very heavily involved in that project and therefore you may need to be budgeting for their time in that project and making sure that we're covering off their salary during that period of, 
uh, period of project development. These sorts of tables are extremely helpful and extremely meaningful when you're doing large complex projects with multiple, multiple team members to know who's going to be covering off of each of these tasks. I did want to show a different example. Oh, I jumped back to my birthday cake there for a second. And I always joke we are friends and therefore I'm not going to edit out my screen transitions here, but I had popped in. We did a collaborative project um, this past semester with our uh, with our work integrated learning at Niagara College. And so Niagara College really loves doing course based projects and research and innovation is a big part of our community. And course based projects are fantastic because we're able to bring in students into all sorts of wonderful engagement uh, strategies. And our friends at Trendy, I'm just going to jump out to their web page here. I pulled up Craig McIntosh because he was one of our informed people. As you can see, uh, Craig McIntosh is the CEO at Trendy. He he loved this project and we had so much fun engaging with him, but he didn't want to be in there prototyping every single day. He wanted to see the end results and he wanted to inspire the students to have some fun. So he was really um, an informed member of our group, but we didn't need to be having him in there every single day. Trendy just happens to be a food waste company and they're a technology company using robotics and technology to manage food waste. We had a ton of fun with them and we did up a work plan and they do not mind us talking about this engagement because it was a really fun strategic uh, partnership for them and they do want to be sharing how they worked with us. And so I'm extremely confident that um, this is something that they want us to be sharing. I know there, there's often times when you don't share project work plans and so on. What we did was work with Trendy and we took their powder and we turned it into uh, an ideation and open innovation platform where the students came up with all sorts of different innovative concepts. We built out a project challenge and charter so that we knew exactly what we were going to be doing. And then we built out our team. So our team included Christine Crevelier and it included myself and then the students from Nutrition for Food Technology. And I should mention... Jason in there as well, because um, we did have involvement. But just take a look here. We built out a, a very high level work plan just to say, here are some of the deliverables and results that we want to be doing. And then I just quickly put in there, Amy is responsible, Christine is consult, the students are accountable, and Craig is our informed. I was going to receive those powders and I would be responsible for that. And then doing some competitive analysis, I was responsible. The students were accountable. The students had to do a competitive analysis, and that was one of their tasks. And they were accountable to that task, and it was my job to make sure that they were responsible. We didn't need to uh, put out all of the different results, though. Christine was consulted all along in this process, and the students in general were accountable to those tasks. And it was my job to make sure that people were really being responsible on these different tasks. So it can be quite simple in terms of how we structure it, um, just, but just to make sure that we know who are the different point people in that process so that no task is left floating out there with nobody responsible for it. And that we are consulting the right people in process so that um, everyone feels informed and engaged and uh, implicated in the entire procedure at the right level. So jumping back to my presentation here, if I could go back to that birthday party with my teenagers, um, it would have been nice. Perhaps my daughter was responsible for organizing the birthday party, but then she should go through and say, all right, I need you to make the... Um, make the reservation at the restaurant. I need my mum to be informed about what's going on. I need my mum to be accountable for driving us to the restaurant. I need another friend to be accountable for buying a cake. And I need everyone to be informed that they should be making a card and a present for our friend. And then last but not least, they should have been accountable to invite me so that I didn't have to, I, in the end, I, I'm, I'm teasing my teenage kids here, but uh, they were like, we didn't make a reservation for you and the restaurant couldn't accommodate. And so I had to go grocery shopping during this birthday party with the teenagers. Um, and 
instead of me sitting in the parking lot twiddling my thumbs, I think it was important for them to go through the process of uh, designing their own mini project and executing it because that's where growth happens. One minute you're organizing a birthday party, the next minute you're doing an innovation project for a a, a great startup like Trendy. Maybe the next day you're 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 running your own startup company and you have a whole lot of different responsibilities with different employees. Everything starts with simple things and then it grows to added layers of complexity and having something as simple as being able to name responsibility makes a big, huge difference. And so it can be something as simple as making sure someone's accountable to, to get that birthday cake. And it could be as, as complex as running a, a multinational company. Long story short, it's super simple to do. And it's super simple to just get into the habit of naming who is responsible, who's accountable, who needs to be consulted, who needs to be informed. Using that framework, super easy, and it adds a heck of a lot of clarity to any sort of project that you might be running. All right, keep it short and simple. And I love it when I hear feedback from you about different ideas for videos, and I love hearing your questions. So that's part of that learning journey is being able to ask great questions and to be bold and brave enough to just reach out and say, hey, I've got some questions. Where can I find out more about this? Because, hey, you might end up as a new video in this series. I look forward to hearing from you and take care and we'll talk soon.